I'm here this morning representing Californians for Retirement Security, which represents one and a half million public employees. The people with me this morning are here to tell you their stories and to set the record straight about the unrelenting assault on California's middle class and workers across the nation. I'd like to share my story with you. I have, like I said, I've been a paraeducator, which is a fancy term for teaching assistant, for 22 years. I work 10 months a year, and I work six hours a day. And I will be very lucky to get an $800 a month retirement from CalPERS when I retire with over 25 years of service. So I want you to understand that out-of-state billionaires and the same corporate interests whose greed led to the collapse of California's budget are leading this attack. They selectively draw attention to headlines about the few inexcusable cases of abuse. We hear about them every day. And they continue to spread myths and falsehoods about public employee pensions. In reality, most of the people who serve the public in California live on modest wages and retire on modest pensions. The average public employee pension in California is $26,000, and many live on far less. A, a school employee's pension average in California is $1,193, even less than the $26,000. We are being held up as the poster children for California's budget problems, and yet pensions make up 3% of our entire state budget, 3%. Public employees agreed to last year's repeal of SB 400, which saved the state $400 million, and unions have been making significant concessions in local jurisdictions across the state. And we fully support efforts to stop spiking and other abuses of the system that are grabbing so many headlines today. We were given our fair share, um, excuse me, we have given our fair share. Now we want a fair shake. It is time to start telling the truth about retirement security for working families. And to help us do that today, let me introduce Ms. Marcy Lani. Thank you, Martha. I'm Marcy Lani. I retired three years ago from the Sacramento City Schools. I worked for 35 years as a classroom teacher in special education and, and then later got another credential and became a school psychologist for 20 year, of those years. Uh, I retired after having paid all of those years into the California State Retirement System, 8% a month, with the anticipation that I would have a safe and secure retirement. I don't live in a big house. I don't drive a big car. I have a small a hybrid. Uh, I don't uh, uh, have an, a lavish lifestyle. I look forward to having time in my retirement to volunteer and spend time with my grandchildren. That's not asking too much. Next is David Miller. Hello everyone, thanks for coming out to, to take a few minutes and listen to our stories. My name is David Miller, I'm a senior hazardous substances scientist at the Department of Toxic Substances Control. I've been a state scientist for 21 years and my background is degrees in biochemistry, biophysics and I have an MBA from one of the top 20 graduate schools of business in the country. And I've chosen a career in public service. My commitment is to hard work and reasonable rewards for that hard work. And that includes a living wage, in effect, for retirement security and access to affordable quality health care. And that's what I expect when my service to the state and the people of California is done. I'm looking forward to that. The attacks on public employees and the modest benefits we receive as retirees 
are simply outrageous. They're unfounded. In many cases, they're untrue. They're misrepresentations of the picture. As was mentioned, the average pension from CalPERS is only about $25,000, $26,000 a year, and half of CalPERS pensioners are getting less than $18,000 a year. I passed up a lot of opportunities to go into the private sector and be employed and chase the salary, the short-term gain. Coming into public service, I was willing to forego that for the promise that I would earn a modest retirement that would take care of the needs of myself and any beneficiaries. You may not believe it from my youthful good looks, but I'm actually old enough to retire from state service. But if I was to retire next year, I couldn't afford to live on my retirement. I would get roughly $21,000 coming in a year. And if something happened to me on my job or elsewhere, my wife would be left with about a thousand dollars a year to try to survive without me. So I've got to work till I'm at least by 59 or 60 to have a retirement that will bring me a little under fifty thousand dollars a year to cover everything. Um, that's pretty tough sledding in terms of being able to plan for a secure retirement and now even that's being threatened. So how do we protect public health? How do we protect our environment, our natural resources? How do we recruit young scientists, people with technical skills? How do we recruit anyone into public service when we're being mistreated, when we are being characterized as hogs at the public trough, when our benefits are being called lavish and excessive and outrageous and unreasonable? because of the tiny few cases of abuse, of excess, that do exist, and there are ways to fix that. But we did not cause this economic crisis. We are not responsible for crushing government, as some would say. The less than 3% of the entire general fund is of the state goes to cover pension costs. Um, it's, it's not fair, it's not reasonable. Promises made should be promises kept, and public employees have sacrificed a lot. We've sacrificed opportunities, we've sacrificed through furloughs, through pay cuts, through layoffs, etc. And now we're sacrificing and suffering due to these attacks, these unfounded misrepresentations, and it just goes on and on. And I think people should be asking, rather than asking, why do public employees deserve to have a modest, secure retirement? Why is the rest of America looking around saying, why don't we have retirement security? What happened to retirement security for other working Americans? And that's the question we should ask when we bail out Wall Street and financial services industries instead of looking at how do we make retirement security a reality for the rest of Americans. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Namrata Singh. Hello. My name is Namrata Singh, and I'm working at UC Medical Center. I've been working there for five years, and I'm a senior custodian. And now I'm a single parent. I've got two children. My daughter goes to university. And now UC is trying to, they're already taking 2% from our pay, and now they're trying to take another 5%. So it is really difficult, and now it's, I'm really confused at how my life going to be. And now they are also threatening for our pension too, and our health care. So when we retire, I might be only getting $500 a month, which they want to take health uh, health care from, uh, from all that also. So I was, uh, we were just thinking, and I'm just talking on behalf of our, our employees too. There are employees who have spent their life working at UC2, working there for 20 years, 30 years, but when they retire, and when we retire, we don't want to go right on the streets or knock the door of welfare. So we're just asking them, and we're just asking for a decent retirement, and we're just looking for a decent life after we retire. And if the government is messed up, so why should we suffer for any uh, for the wrongs that they have done? But we just want to have a very decent life after we retire, and that's all I have to say. Good 
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brent Meyer, and I'm the president of the Sacramento Police Officers Association. I am a Sacramento police officer, and I'm happy to stand with these folks and uh, speak to you this morning. You know, on Sunday night and uh, Monday morning, I stood about 75 yards over your shoulder at the California Peace Officers Memorial, and I listened to the stories of what I think are California's heroes. Eleven brave men who lost their lives in 2010 honorably and serving it without hesitation. I think of the story of Ryan Bonaminio, who as a Riverside police officer was shot and killed trying to chase down and arrest a hit and run uh, suspect last November. I think of Fresno County Sheriff's Deputy Joe Wallenmeyer, who was helping fire investigators arrest an arsonist. I think of the bravery of the officer that backed him up, Javier Behar from the Reedley Police Department, who was also shot, subsequently killed, murdered, uh, as he responded to that call. California has an honorable history of remembering the men and women whose names are enrolled on that memorial. There are almost 1,450 of them. But we always seem to forget, unfortunately, that these folks were also public employees. Lately in the great debate over public employee uh, pensions, there are those that would have you believe that the state's employees are draining the retirement funds with bloated and underserved or undeserved benefits. That the people you see up here behind me are pulling in over $100,000 a year after they retire. Well, this is not true. I'll say it again, this is not true. In fact, the average public employee pension for somebody who puts in 20 or more years in public service is only about $2,200 a month. That's $2,200 a month. Being a police officer, being a peace officer, or really being a public servant in California is a noble job. Being a police officer in California is not for the faint of heart. Such unique and able individuals are incredibly difficult to find, let alone train, and to get them successfully out doing the job is a tough nut to crack. But a secure retirement is critical to these folks' security. It's critical to California's security to make sure that we can recruit and retain police officers. None do it for the money. They do it because they deeply care about the communities they protect and the people that they want to serve and help. You know, I could have made a more comfortable living for my family, chasing uh, dreams of being an architect or a lawyer or marketing executive, but I didn't. They were engaging paths to me, but I chose law enforcement. And the love of law enforcement also chose me. And amongst what doing the job offers, promised the return of a defined benefit. But that's a retirement program that was designed to be flexible and evolve over time. You can look at us and see that the headlines that we live lavishly and beyond what most people live on, uh, they're false. They're just blatantly false. The folks behind you have not shied away. Public employees have not shied away from the realities of the economy today. So to overreact and steal their hard-earned benefits promised to the public employees in the state before they can step up and again negotiate a way or negotiate fixes to those problems, uh, it just is not right. In fact, changes at the bargaining table uh, would be abandoned, the, the commitments would be abandoned if we didn't allow public employees to come to the table and help be part of the solution. We're not part of the problem, but we need to be part of the solution. And this is a great debate. It's going to have a lot of discussion in the future, but I'm hoping that you see the folks behind me today and you understand that they're here and they want to be there to help fix this problem. All Californians deserve a fair retirement, and I'd like to thank you for coming out here today.